Hello, I built a quad smart battery charger that uses a jacuzzi switch to turn itself off so it doesn't catch fire. Smart chargers, fire protection, and unnecessary LEDs. What's not to like? I use a combination of Ryobi and Black & Decker cordless hand tools, and these cordless hand tools use batteries, much like your cordless hand tools do. These batteries are charged using smart chargers like these. The smart charger is designed to charge the battery and then cut off as soon as the battery is charged, but I've seen reports of some people with wood shops who've had fires from their chargers. It's rare, but it's something to be concerned with. Because while fire is lots of fun in cookouts and fireworks, to me, it's not the sort of thing I want in my wood shop. So I've decided to come up with a way to cut power to these chargers after a set period of time so there's no chance of a fire. To do that, I'm gonna use this. It's a jacuzzi timer that automatically turns off the jacuzzi or lights or whatever it else is you have in a certain period of time. It's a mechanical timer, which means there's no software to fail, no digital anything to fail. It's a clock that counts down and cuts the power. Turn the knob, walk away, and you're done. This charger looks complex, but it's actually a pretty simple build. The backer board is quarter inch plywood, 18 inches wide and 14 inches tall. The cabinet is made of seven inch wide pine. The top and bottom of the cabinet are 16 and a half inches wide. The left and right sides are six and a half inches tall. And this little divider is five inches tall and four and a half inches deep. That gives us a gap where the wires can pass through. You'll add some additional wood to hold your chargers on top of the bottom here, but that's up to you how you want to do it. All right, that's out of the way. Now it's time to start cutting wood. Assembly is with glue and a brad nailer, or we could have screwed it. Doesn't matter, just attach it so it won't come apart. I'm going to keep the full length cords on all the chargers and I need a place to hide them, so I cut a notch out of the back. This notch is going to be our secret wire compartment, and I'm going to build it up with some scrap wood and an additional piece of plywood on top to coil up and hide our wires in. This will make sense in a minute. Then I attach the cabinet to the top of the shelf and construction is done. Always use hearing protection when using tools like a brad nailer. Even though it fires for just a couple of seconds, it can damage your hearing. All right, so we've got the box finished. The hole here is for the timer and LEDs because LEDs are important. This is the shelf for the inductive charger, the earbud charger, the power supply, and any batteries that have already charged. And of course, down below, we have the place where we're going to put our four chargers. On the back, we have our bay for the cable management to get those out of the way. So now I need to drill some holes in this for the cables that go in and out and to route across the back and then we'll mount the chargers. First step is to drill a big hole so the power strip power cord can pass through to the back of the box. Just another part in concealing our wires because we don't want them to see the magic. Then four strips of scrap are glued in to where the electronics are going to be. This is going to hold the electrical box. The last woodworking step is to cut the ever-present French cleat that will hold this to the wall. This strip is always unseen and always extremely important. The French cleat strip is brad nailed to the back, but I went back later and added glue because the brad nails just weren't doing it. Now that the mounting box is complete, it's time to put in the electronics. The electronics are going to be in this double gang box that sits right here. On the right side is going to be the jacuzzi switch that we've talked about, right here. And on the other side is going to go this voltmeter. This voltmeter will light up and tell us what line voltage is and will give us an LED indicator that the system is active. So when you turn a switch, this red voltmeter will come on and you'll see that it's running and what voltage is coming through. But that leaves us a gap down below and well, we can't leave a gap in our control panel. So I'm going to put this LED in right here so when the system is active, we'll have a red voltmeter that shows us how much voltage is going through and this green LED that shows the system is active. Now you could make the case that the red voltmeter is all the LEDs you need and you'd be wrong because more LEDs is always better and this LED is green. You see my point? A 20 millimeter hole is drilled for the voltmeter and a half inch hole is cut for the green LED. This gives us red and green LEDs to make it all Christmassy. Then the power strip is installed. This power strip has 420 volt receptacles and two USB receptacles, so I can plug in lots of things. 
The power strip is mounted now. It's plugged in. You can see the LED on. So we've got power up here. We can plug the battery chargers and USB stuff in, no problem. But we still have to switch it on and off. So I've taken the power cord and I've routed it through this hole. And I'm going to take this junction box, cut the wire. The junction box is going to handle all the switching. And then the wire is going to come out down here to plug into the receptacle on the wall. So pretty close to finishing the wiring. And then we can get the battery packs on. The power strip wire is passed through the gap between the panels and cut. This is where we're going to switch things. So, it's time to install the switch. Okay, let's go. The Ryobi Smart Charger is kind of large and it holds large batteries. Battery clips in like this and you can mount it using these keyhole mounts to the wall. But right side up, that puts the battery right up against the bottom of this shelf. It would work, but it's a little awkward to grab. So what I want to do is turn it upside down and mount it upside down so I can reach it easier because I do what I want. Now Ryobi has the keyhole stuff on the back, but it also has these four tabs here that I can drill holes in and put screws through. It's very friendly for screw mounting. Thanks Ryobi! Ryobi makes it simple. Flip the thing over on its back, drill the four holes, and then put in four screws on each one of the two chargers. This gives my upside down chargers a rock solid mount that won't pull off, and the chargers haven't been damaged in any way. The Black & Decker Smart Charger is smaller than the Ryobi Smart Charger and the batteries are somewhat smaller as well. They just slide right in. So this I can mount right down here and get to it quite easily like I can with the Ryobis over here. Unfortunately, Black & Decker has no mounting hardware method on the back, so I'm going to have to come up with something. Thanks, Black & Decker! The Black & Decker chargers are going to take a little more finesse, so I take the back off the charger and use a scrap piece of wood as a mounting board. Notice this piece of scrap is not as tall as the charger. That's because I'm going to mount the charger to the scrap of wood and still leave myself room to get to the screw holes on the charger from the back to put the charger back together. See how that works? Now I've got mounted chargers. Mild damage to the chargers, but they're still functional and I can take them off if I need to. It's not perfect, but let's face it, Black & Decker gave me nothing here. Now I put the strip of wood with its two reassembled Black & Decker chargers back on the unit. Put some screws through the back end of the scrap wood, and it's all mounted. This solution holds the chargers down quite securely, and no one can tell from the front what a hack job this was. But it works! The four wires and the four chargers are strapped down so they don't wander around. And you can see here the channel I cut to put the charger wires through to the hole that goes to the power strip. So, since we're talking about it, let's use that hole and channel to put the power cords through to the power strip so we can get power to our chargers. Then the four power cords are plugged into the four receptacles on the power strip. We're all set and ready to test this. It's all put together and good to go, except for these wires down here. Now, if only I had planned ahead that these wires would be hidden. Have you forgotten already about our secret compartment? That's why we put it on here, to hide these. Let's take care of it. Concealment is pretty easy. The wires are bundled up, zip-tied, and stuffed into the secret compartment. The cutouts in the back allow the wire to lay flat and not interfere with the French cleats. See, now those wires are all hidden. The only wire hanging down is the power cord that powers this monstrosity. It's over here now by the drill press and the drill driver mount here, so it's in its natural environment. This is where it's going to live in the shop. It's time to fire it up for the first time. Yes! LEDs! So that's the smart charging station. It automatically and mechanically cuts itself off after a couple of hours after the batteries are charged to keep this shop safe from fire. Plus it looks pretty awesome over the drill driver station down below where the batteries are going to be used.
I've really been looking forward to having this completed. It consolidates all my smart chargers, my batteries, it recharges my earbuds, and it provides me with the bank of unnecessary LEDs. Thanks to our patrons who help us build things like this. You really helped with this one. We really appreciate it. Comment below to tell me what you think about this build. And if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell so you won't miss any future builds. Well, I'm off to my next adventure. See you next time.